Welcome back to another Kelp BC lesson. Today we're going to build on the polar slope we talked about in our last video and specifically we're going to start looking for specific locations of where the horizontal and vertical tangent lines lie. Now just a quick recap of our last lesson. Conceptually we tried to really establish the fact that um, the derivative of r with respect to theta did not measure slope. Okay, and uh, we tried to get that out of our heads, but we did say, of course, dy over dx, that does measure slope, and so we had to find a way to express our polar derivative in terms of dy and dx, and that led to that big, long formula, and I would like, uh, you know, right off the bat here, um, we're going to get you, get the blood flow, and I'm going to have you hit the pause button and see if you can write out that long polar formula. Now I think the key to this, and we, we talked last time that you don't necessarily have to memorize it, but for instance, when you try to find the numerator, the derivative of y here, you're visualizing y equals r sine of theta, okay, from pre-calc, and then you're just doing product rule to it. So I'm thinking first derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Okay, so it's nothing like super complicated or fancy. And then for the denominator, again, I'm visualizing our cosine of theta from pre-calc, and again, doing product rule. So I've got first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And, and that's our quick recap of what we did last week. Now the good news is today, as far as the amount of work we put into these, it's going to be significantly shorter and easier. So there's the good news we'll get out of the uh, take care of right away. Now as far as vertical and horizontal tangent lines, let's look at this uh, cardioid on the left here. How many distinct horizontal tangent lines does it have? I think we could make the argument that we've got one ta horizontal tangent line at that location and then there's going to be another one down here on the bottom. So I would say there's two distinct or unique horizontal tangent lines. Gets a little more interesting when we start to talk about vertical. I think the obvious one is over here. We definitely have a vertical tangent line right there. But however, on the left's edge here, there's a unique one right here, and then there's another unique one right there. For, so we would say there's a grand total of three unique vertical tangent lines. Also worth noting is that the, the moment here where it hits the pole, that's a non-differentiable point. What you're going to notice right there is that both dy and dx equal zero, and zero divided by zero is indeterminate, and that's what you're going to get right there at that cardioid pole. All right, let's go look at the uh, Limicon with an inner loop. Let's start with horizontal again. How many distinct horizontal tangent lines do you see? I think there's one right here at the top. I think there's one right here at the bottom. I think those are the obvious ones. Don't overlook the two that are in here. There's a, another horizontal at the top of the inner loop, and then there's a fourth horizontal at the bottom of the inner loop. So we would say that there's a grand total of four horizontal tangent lines. As far as verticals go, this one is very similar to the cardioid. We've got our obvious one here on the right edge, and then we've got two more distinct ones on the left edge for a grand total of three distinct, unique vertical tangent lines. All right, as far as our shortcut summary, we're going to cut right to the chase. We know that every horizontal line, no matter whether it's rectangular coordinates, polar, parametric, no matter what the case may be, is that um, the slope of that horizontal line has to equal zero. Well, what you'll notice, if you go ahead and cross multiply, you find out that the dx is irrelevant. So our shortcut is, we're just gonna say that the derivative of y has to equal zero, or dy, our numerator. And then the vertical tangent lines, again, doesn't matter what form you're in, we know that that derivative does not exist. The slope does not exist. So what's gonna happen, the only way that a fraction doesn't exist is if the denominator equals zero. So we're gonna cut right to the chase and we're going to say that dx has to equal zero. So those are the shortcuts, and we're really going to cut our workload in half, and that's going to be paramount to making sure that we can complete and answer these questions in a timely fashion on a multiple choice exam. So without further ado, let's jump right in and start tackling a couple of examples. Um, the first one that I want to take a look at here is r equals 1 plus 2 cosine of theta. And again, um, I guess my infatuation with the Limicon with the inner loop continues. I just think those are the, the more exciting examples to take a look at. Now, as far as sketching this rascal, I think uh, rectangularly speaking, we're getting significantly quicker at these. We can visualize the vertical shift. We know the amplitude is going to push us up here all the way to 3. It's going to drop us to negative 1. Okay. So this is what my rectangular sketch looks like. Now, in terms of a polar... We transfer that over. 
We're going to start at 0, 3. Again, I don't think we really need polar graph paper to make this look sharp. And then at pi, we're pushed back here, and then 3 pi over 2 here. So we're going to get something that looks like this. Make sure you're crossing through the pole at exactly the right time. And you'll notice our inner loop, just for fun, is going to start, let's see, what is that? That would be 2 pi over 3 is when our inner loop starts. And then it's going to, inner loop's going to um, end at 4 pi over 3. That's when we exit the inner loop. Just worth noting. Not a big deal today, but it will be when we get to area here shortly. So as far as horizontal tangent lines go, okay, we see the obvious one up here at the top. Okay, I'm going to label that. Uh, let's see, that was, um, where did our graphing start? I think we started right here. So that was the first one that we hit. We'll call that point A. And then we went through the pole down. So this is actually the second one we drew. We finished the upper path. Okay, so there's the third one. We'll call that point C. We exited the inner loop and then we came down here. This is the fourth one. I just like to keep them in order. In the, in the sequence that we graphed them. So we've got our A, B, C, and our D. Now it's time to get to work. We know the shortcut says we could strictly set dy equal to zero. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to remind myself dy equals zero. Now for this particular problem, dy is going to be, uh, let's see, r times cosine. So r is going to be one plus two cosine times the cosine that's in there plus sine and then the derivative of r, in this case, is negative 2 sine. And we're setting that equal to 0. Clean it up a little bit. We'll do a little distributing here. We've got cosine plus 2 cosine squared. And then we've got minus 2 sine squared. And this is a monster. Now, um, before the video, I played around with, um, for instance, here's what I tried out of these two terms here, I factored out the two, and then I saw a double angle formula for cosine. I knew that cosine squared minus sine squared was actually cosine of two theta. And then I made another substitution for that, because cosine of two theta has three different variations, and I substituted two cosine squared minus one, and tried to clean it all up and so forth. The bottom line is it didn't factor, all right? So what we're gonna do here today is we're actually gonna use our calculator to solve this. And our big goal here is to graph this equation and because we're setting it equal to zero, we're going to look for that graph's roots. And those four roots are going to correspond to the four points on the polar graph where the horizontal tangent lines occurred. So grab that calculator, okay? Even if it's out in your car, in another room, in your book bag, wherever it is, stop right now, go get it. It's going to pay off. We need to do this yourself. All right, so hope you've got your own calculator. We've taken this equation, and in fact, nothing fancy here. We just took this equation that we had developed, and I typed it into y1. Now, you can't see the whole thing, but what I did do is here is I kind of scrolled to the middle, and I wanted to emphasize the amount of parentheses we need. We do need that extra set of parentheses. Let's see if Eric switch it. Okay. Um, we need that parenthesis right there and right there, and make sure that we're squaring the appropriate quantity. And then once you... Um, Let's see, I think my x min was 0, my x max was 2 pi, uh, my y min was negative 3, and my y max was positive 3, and I got this beautiful w-looking graph that was kind of exciting. And so basically now we're going after these roots. This root right here is going to correspond to part or point A earlier. This is going to be point B, point C, and point D, and those three um, roots are going to be my points. So let's see. When I went ahead and executed all of those, and I encourage you to do the same on your own right now, and then we'll, you can hit the pause button again and come back and see if you got the same answers I did. So here are those uh, four magical points I came up with. Again, obviously, without it goes without saying that these aren't radians. It's not, uh, not 0.936 degrees or anything crazy like that. Um, and uh, let's see, you know, obviously, 2.5... 74 is a little smaller than pi, 3.709 is a little bigger than pi, 5.347 is a little smaller than 2 pi, and those correspond to the points above, and just uh, for point of emphasis, uh, this corresponds to point A on your picture, this is point B, this is point C, and this is point D, and those are the four theta values. Ah, ooh, I just could catch those, shouldn't be x equals, that should be theta equals. Um, those are where the horizontal tangent lines occur. All right, we're going to switch gears here, we're going to start to talk about a vertical tangent line, and the 
curve I want you to consider is r equals 2 plus 2 cosine. Now, as soon as I write down that curve, you know, what are your expectations? Do you know, you know, is this a circle, limicon with a linear, uh, inner loop, inner, uh, let's see, limicon with a dimple, or is it a cardioid? Now, remember that rule. We said if the absolute value of A equals the absolute value of B, then it is a cardioid. And we're going to get that really sharp point at the pole that's not non-differentiable, and that's probably uh, uh, one of the more important things to keep in mind here. So as far as a polar, or no, a rectangular curve goes, Let's see, we got the vertical shift at two. We're gonna go two units above, two units below, and two units above. We got this rascal going right here. Okay, now in terms of his polar counterpart, let's see if we can fit this in here. Let's see, we need to go as high as four, it looks like. Okay, and let's see, my very first dot's gonna go right here. That's starting point. And then at pi over two, we have a height of two. And then we're gonna hit that. And then 3 pi over 2 is 2 again. So we're going to look something like this. We might spill off the graph there a little bit. Come back up. Okay, so there is my cardioid. And we're focusing on vertical tangent lines. And we have the obvious one right here. And that one, you hopefully can tell me that that's at theta equals 0 or theta equals 2 pi, whichever you prefer to call it. The other two get a little feistier. You've got a unique one right here, and then you've got the third unique one right there. So again, just for emphasis, we have three unique, distinct vertical tangent lines. So, and the, the point of making that comment right there is just to make sure we've got three answers when we're done. Don't give me two, don't give me four. Let's make sure you're giving me three answers when we're all done here. All right, uh, so the shortcut says, if you want vertical tangent lines, all we need to do is set dx equal to zero. And we're visualizing, we know that x is our cosine, we're visualizing that little formula and we're taking the product rule. And so dx is really r, 2 plus 2 cosine of theta, times the derivative of cosine plus cosine times the derivative of r, which in this case is negative 2 sine. So let's do a, oh, I, try, I should squeeze in the equal 0 there at the end. I'd like to see that on your paper when you do these problems. So we'll do a little distributing here. We've got uh, negative 2 sine of theta minus 2 cosine of theta sine of theta. Again, those could be in any order. And then, let's see, whoops, minus 2 cosine of theta sine of theta, set it equal to 0. Let's combine some like terms. We know that that second and third term are like terms. So we now have a grand total of negative 4 cosine theta sine of theta. Now, you may be tempted to throw this one in the calculator as well, but this question is going to show up on the non-calculator half of the exam. And the reason is, is because we can pull out a beautiful GCF here of negative 2 sine. And that's going to leave us with 1 plus 2 cosine on the inside here. As we tee this rascal up, when you say that negative 2 sine of theta has to equal 0, that just implies that theta is equal to 0 degree, 0 radians, pi radians or 2 pi radians. And we'll talk about whether we want to keep all of them. And then when you say that 1 plus 2 cosine of theta is equal to 0, we're going to subtract the 1 over, divide by 2. Let's see, reference angle of 60, so theta is really 120 or 240. That's 2 pi over 3 or 4 pi over 3. Now, let's go back and look at our graph um, that we had. Let's think about pi. Pi is right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to reject the pi. And here's our reasoning for rejecting that pi. And, and we're going to have to have a similar statement on our work if it was a free response question. We're going to reject the pi because not only is dx equal to 0, but because dy is equal to 0 also. Okay, And whenever you have, so you've actually got dy over dx is equal to 0 over 0, and that's indeterminate, and that means neither do you have a slope of 0 or undefined. It's just a nothing, non-existent slope. So who are our solutions? I'm going to say 0. I'm going to say 2 pi over 3. I'm going to say 4 pi over 3. 
And if I said 2 pi, that would just be duplicating the original one. So we have our three solutions that correspond to our three vertical tangent lines we had earlier. And ladies and gentlemen, that is our lesson for today. Good luck. And uh, let's make sure we get the assignment in on time. We'll be collecting those until midnight on Friday.